The world is changing fast, but you can learn it at a slower pace. Special English. You're listening to Special English. Here is the news. A team of scientists from China, Britain and Denmark has constructed a comprehensive marine microbiome database demonstrating the potential of marine microorganisms for science research and biotechnological applications. The research team, led by BGI Research, a Shenzhen-based life science organization, spent five years reanalyzing nearly 240 terabytes of publicly available data and built a database containing some 43,000 genomes and 2.4 billion gene sequences. More than 20,000 of these genomes were identified as potential novel species. The study has been published in the journal Nature. This database contains information on marine ecosystems ranging from the Antarctic to the Arctic, from coastal areas to the open ocean, and from the ocean's surface to the 10,000 meter deep Hadel zone. Fan Guang Yi with BGI Research noted that this study provided new insights into how these microorganisms are distributed across different environments. The research team uncovered three new enzymes for plastic degradation, one of which can degrade PET plastic film within three days, with the degradation rate of 83%. Li Sheng Ying, co-corresponding author of the study, said that one gram of this enzyme can degrade 55 plastic water bottles of 500 millimeters each. Li highlighted that this advancement would play a positive role in addressing plastic pollution particularly in achieving green, low-carbon and sustainable use of PET plastics in China. Li added that the enzymes will also help reduce the reliance of the plastic manufacturing industry on petroleum and lower its carbon emissions. In this study... The research team also explored the database's genetic resources from multiple dimensions, identifying 36 new gene editing systems. Researchers investigated the application potential of one of these systems, which has proven highly effective for genome editing in all testing scenarios. This highlights its potential as a new tool for basic research and translational medicine development. Building on these results, BGI Research has partnered with the Hong Kong Polytechnic University to establish a joint research centre for further development and commercialization. You're listening to Special English. Chinese researchers, in collaboration with counterparts from France, Germany and Ireland, 
have made joint efforts to reveal the deceleration pattern of the Earth's rotation. They discovered that between 650 million and 280 million years ago, the Earth-Moon distance increased by approximately 20,000 kilometers and the length of a day extended by roughly 2.2 hours. The Earth's rotation has been slowing over time due to tidal dissipation, but the rate of this deceleration has not been consistently established. The researchers analysed eight geological data sets to reconstruct the Earth's rotational history from 650 million to 240 million years ago, identifying a staircase pattern in the Earth's deceleration between 650 million and 280 million years ago. According to the article published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, specifically, there are two periods with high Earth rotation deceleration, namely from 650 to 500 million years ago, and from 350 to 280 million years ago, separated by an interval of stalled deceleration from 500 million to 350 million years ago. The article noted that these two periods roughly coincided with the Cambrian explosion and the largest mass extinction event in Earth's history, adding that the two periods may have provided the necessary conditions for the evolution of early marine ecosystems. Ma Chao, a professor at the Chengdu University of Technology, said that the study has important theoretical significance for exploring the climate, environment and biological evolution during the Earth's rotation deceleration period. According to Ma, the team of researchers will further study the internal links between the Earth's rotation changes and natural phenomena such as the Earth's magnetic field, tidal actions and climate change in order to build a more comprehensive and accurate Earth system evolution model. This is Special English. An ancient rock painting site has been discovered in the Tong Tien River Basin in the source area of the Yangtze River in northwest China's Qinghai province. According to local authorities, the site is located on a cliff at an altitude of 4,094 meters in Yushu, featuring nomadic styles of life on the grasslands in northern China. The new discovery will provide important evidence for studying the culture at the source of the Yangtze River. So far, over 60 sites of nearly 10,000 rock paintings have been discovered in the Tong Tien River Basin, with the earliest dating back some 3,000 200 years. The rock paintings are rich in images. In addition to human figures, 
there are animal images such as yaks, deer, wolves, as well as images of two-wheeled vehicles, among other symbols. You're listening to Special English. A nature reserve in northeast China's Liaoning Province has recorded eleven thousand one hundred and seventy-five raptors in a single day during its autumn raptor monitoring. The number, a record high, marks the first time on the Chinese mainland that over ten thousand raptors have been recorded. In a single day, during autumn monitoring, located in Dalian, the Snake Island Laotie Mountain National Nature Reserve is an important node on the East Asian Australasian Flyway, with raptors being the most common species among migratory birds in the area. Wang Xiaoping. Deputy Director of the Reserve's Administration said that monitoring the changes in raptor populations is crucial for assessing the ecological health of the region. Wang noted that the reserve began raptor monitoring in 2018, and they recorded a total of 85,000. Five hundred and sixty-seven raptors last autumn. The Snake Island Laotie Mountain Biosphere Reserve, as a site of migratory birds along the coast of the Yellow Sea, Bohai Gulf of China, was inscribed on the World Heritage List by UNESCO this July. This is special English. What day is the most auspicious one in a year? If you can choose from several lucky numbers in Chinese tradition and make a combination, what will be your guess? Let's say eight, six, nine, or one, August the eighth. June the ninth, September the eighth, or January the sixth. Wait, wait, that's the wrong direction. According to the ancient Book of Changes, numbers from one to ten have either yin or yang characteristics. Odd numbers, such as one, three, five, are yang numbers, while even numbers like two, four, six. Are yin numbers. In this case, the number nine is the biggest yang number, which means growth, prosperity, longevity, and all the good stuff in life. So the most auspicious day of a year in Chinese culture must be the Double Ninth Festival, also known as the Chongyang Festival. It falls on the ninth day of the ninth month, according to the lunar calendar. It falls on October the eleventh this year. Well, with a number repeated twice in a row, double ninth means that all those good things in life, such as one's years, luck, blessings, and happiness, will last twice as long. You can tell how auspicious the double ninth can be. Is there any other day that can be better than this day? I'm afraid not. Well, how would Chinese people celebrate the double ninth festival? First, climbing hills. You don't have to be as professional as a free soloist to climb mountains. In fact, since ancient times, people have been practicing this without strict rules. They do this for an auspicious reason: the higher you climb, 
the better life quality you'll get. How much I wish this were true. Eating Chongyang cakes in China, each festival offers a special opportunity for people to enjoy food matched with the festivity or the season. As you may know, moon cakes for the Moon Festival, and sweet green rice bowl for the Qingming Day, stuff like that, just like what roast turkey means at Christmas. So, for the most auspicious day of the year, food that's tailor-made for the Double Ninth Festival must be something special. That's right. It's the Chongyang cake, or by another name, flower cake. It's round in shape, made from rice scattered with dried fruit, roasted nuts, and dyed in different colors. It usually looks like an Excel pie chart with five shares. Another tradition is to appreciate chrysanthemums. In late autumn, when the weather gets cold, little flowers are vital enough to blossom fully. However, chrysanthemum flowers are not afraid of the harsh weather, and blossom without hesitation. They never stand out with fragrance, but proudly fight against the cold. With artificial cultivation. Chrysanthemums bloom in various shapes and colors. They symbolize fidelity, optimism, joy, and long life, of course. And these have been recorded in some well-known Chinese poems. Those who do not know anything about the chrysanthemum's presence in Chinese poetry cannot boast of any skillfulness in Chinese culture. Yes, that's true. And the final one is wearing cornels or dogwood. It is said that since the Han Dynasty, people began to pray for longevity during the Chongyang Festival. It was a result of the influence of the Taoist pursuit of eternal life. People take some herbal medicines for this purpose. All wear cornels, little red fruit, in the hope of driving away evil. However, as time goes by, one can no longer see anyone wearing cornels on the double ninth day. Now things do change with the times. Since the late 1980s, the double ninth festival was named as Senior Citizens Day in China. Giving this day greater significance, it focuses on the Chinese traditional virtues of honoring, respecting, loving, and helping the elderly. Senior people will be invited to dine in fancy restaurants, go shopping, watch a film, go to a spa, or enjoy theatrical performances. And finally. Let's enjoy a famous Chinese poem about the Double Ninth Festival, entitled "Thinking About My Brothers in Shandong on the Double Ninth Day." All alone in a foreign land, I am twice as homesick on this day, when brothers carry dogwood up the mountain, each of them a branch, and my branch missing. You're listening to Special English. That is the end of this edition of Special English. To recap, I'm going to read two of the news items again at normal speed. Please listen carefully. A team of scientists from China, Britain, and Denmark has constructed a comprehensive marine microbiome database demonstrating the potential of marine microorganisms for science research and biotechnological applications. 
The research team, led by BGI Research, a Shenzhen-based life science organisation, spent five years re-analysing nearly 240 terabytes of publicly available data and built a database containing some 43,000 genomes and 2.4 billion gene sequences. More than 20,000 of these genomes were identified as potential novel species. The study has been published in the journal Nature. This database contains information on marine ecosystems ranging from the Antarctic to the Arctic, from coastal areas to the open ocean, and from the ocean's surface to the 10,000-metre-deep Hadal Zone. Fang Guangyi, with BGI Research, noted that this study provided new insights into how these microorganisms are distributed across different environments. The research team uncovered three new enzymes for plastic degradation, one of which can degrade PET plastic film within three days, with a degradation rate of 83%. Li Shengying, co-corresponding author of the study, said that one gram of this enzyme can degrade 55 plastic water bottles of 500 millilitres each. Lee highlighted that this advancement would play a positive role in addressing plastic pollution, particularly in achieving green, low-carbon and sustainable use of PET plastics in China. Lee added that the enzymes will also help reduce the reliance of the plastic manufacturing industry on petroleum and lower its carbon emissions. In this study, the research team also explored the database's genetic resources from multiple dimensions, identifying 36 new gene editing systems. Researchers investigated the application potential of one of these systems, which has proven highly effective for genome editing in all testing scenarios. This highlights its potential as a new tool for basic research and translational medicine development. Building on these results, BGI Research has partnered with the Hong Kong Polytechnic University to establish a joint research centre for further development and commercialisation. This is Special English. A nature reserve in northeast China's Liaoning province has recorded 11,175 raptors in a single day during its autumn raptor monitoring. The number, a record high, marks the first time on the Chinese mainland that over 10,000 raptors have been recorded in a single day during autumn monitoring. Located in Dalian, the Snake Island, Lao Tie Mountain National Nature Reserve, is an important node on the East Asian-Australasian flyway, with raptors being the most common species among migratory birds in the area. Wang Xiaoping, deputy director of the reserve's administration, said that monitoring the changes in raptor populations is crucial for assessing the ecological health of the region. Wang noted that the reserve began raptor monitoring in 2018 and they recorded a total of 85,567 raptors last autumn. The Snake Island Lao Tie Mountain Biosphere Reserve, as a site of the migratory bird along the coast of the Yellow Sea Bohai Gulf of China, was inscribed on the World Heritage List by UNESCO this July. That is the end of today's program. I hope you'll join us every day to learn English at a slower pace. Listen up. Can you hear the heartbeat of our world? It's vibrant and pulsating with the essence of life itself. From the stem of trees to the gurgle of rivers. From the silent strength of mountains to the icy whispers of glaciers. Even the solid ground beneath our feet. Right there, in the midst of all, beats the heart of humanity. What if those other heartbeats were to stop? Would ours keep on ticking?